Hello, welcome to Car Hazard. You can get this game on itch. Links will be down in the description. Apparently there's no sound. And if you rearrange the letter and take out a few letters, you get Charizard. Okay, there we go. I'm broke. Mumbling. No, not good enough. Too blunt. Granny, I found a new project, but I need your help to... Wait, no, that's way too bad. As I turn off the engine, I'm wondering how to ask Grandma for help. Gr Grandma? Grandma? Oh my gosh, they're spelling mistakes. The lady is getting old, and so is her help. It's only a matter of, 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 uh, only a matter of month, if not weeks, before she passes away and no one is spending enough time with her. Uh, Uncle Mike is, well, a moron who only thinks about his nearly lovely dovey wife. Mom has left the country with a young and handsome man called G.I. Joe, a typical Italian, Italiano. Jimmy is Jimmy, focused on his career. Sophie's just thinking about the inheritance. And anyway, I've decided to join Granny for a few days. I can't imagine how lonely she must be. I have a tiny mini shorty problem. I'm kind of broke. It meant I couldn't afford a plane ticket. Now I've got to ride over 500 miles with my jalopy, no cash, and one solution, hitchhikers. This is my first time. I don't feel really safe because I'm a woman, but I hope luck's gonna be on my side. Sunny Hotel, yeah, that's the first meeting point. I pick up my phone and open the app. Okay. Where shall I be? Well, the first thing that pops up in my head is... Roseanne. Let's see who's about to share my journey. Okay, so we have Felix. Uh, interest? Don't talk. Just drive. Okay, let's, uh, accept. A gloomy shadow enters in the back and avoids my eyes. My pulse is racing. I shouldn't have picked him up. I have a bad feeling. It's a hooded guy, and I can barely see his face. Ask how he's feeling. Hi, my name is Roseanne. How are you doing? Mm. The creepy individual shots. Shots a short glance at me. A chill runs down my spine. Instantly, he resumes his action and watches the landscapes through the window. The simple look has quickened my heartbeat. Then I notice a box between his arms. The wooden box has a simple appearance. However, the guy is holding it close to his heart. That box is disturbing me. A creep has come inside my car. He is quiet. His luggage is only a strange looking box. What's inside? It would be extremely intrusive, but I am not feeling safe. I know it. Maybe it is nothing. Maybe it is something. It's scaring me out. What? It feels like it was in uh, Google Translate. We'll push our luck. So, Felix, what's in the box? The gloomy hoodie man suddenly observes me. I'm full of regret. A part of me knows that I should have kept it quiet. He is looming over me. His dark green eyes are scanning me in a deafening silence. 
Then he sticks his back to the seat with a demented smirk. Somehow I know something is wrong. Not your business. As I pass an intersection, a loud noise startles me. I feel a breath above my shoulder. I slowly turn my head towards it. Felix's green eyes are staring at me. His hands violently catch the wheel. I can smell his putrid breath. Do you want to know what's in the box? I can show it to you. Now, stop the car. Do as I say or resume the drive? I'm going to resume the drive. He is crazy, completely insane. But does he really think he's gonna outsmart me? That I'll remain silent and obey a madman? Nah, not even in his devious dreams. I shove off his hands from the wheel and push harder the gas pedal. Felix remained silent, as if he had never asked anything. Finally, I can see the hotel where is supposed to be the drop-off point. I'm impatient to get rid of this creep. His presence is overwhelming. He is overtaking my mind. So, this is it. I glance at the rear view mirror with apprehension. Something is wrong in his voice. He seems joyful. He jumps off the back bench and passes his head between the front seats. You want to know what's inside? I'm a few miles away from my goal. I could just stop the car, break, stop the car and run, but I have a really bad feeling and my fear doesn't cease to increase as a sharp and cold object touches my throat. Stop the car, I'll show you. Uh, I'm beyond all hope. I'm well aware that when I obey to my passenger and stop the engine in a deserted road, the knife has made a minor cut, but the hand which is holding it belongs to someone out of control. I have to distract him for I'm doomed. Felix slowly moves his wooden box forward and stops his action when it is in my field of vision. Those are my precious, and to be honest, I like yours too. He suddenly opened the case, a screech escapes from my mouth, but Felix rapidly shuts me up with his hand. I shrivel in vain, his grip is stronger than what I predicted. I can shake off the awful image of what is inside the box. A large collection of bloody eyes are gathered round blue, green, and Gray. All of the colors of the world are there in a terrifying scene. I'll throw up, I know I will, but I can't even react that Felix's face moves nearer to mine with a mysterious smirk. The blade thrusts into my throat. You shouldn't have asked, but thanks for your donation. I don't have the time to feel a thing. It is a blur. All the lights are suddenly out. Well, that was stupid. I had it coming now. Okay, so we have Sam. I don't know why there's a knife air freshener. That's just weird. A lovely young girl enter in the car. She puts her backpack between her legs and sighs in relief. A sweet perfume is taking over the compartment. Smell and reassure her. Be intimidated by such a beauty. Smell and reassure. Hello, I'm Roseanne. I'm no freaky killer, and I love painting. What about you? The girl seems a bit shy. Unexpectedly, she turns towards me with a big smile. Hi, I'm, S I'm Sam. Sorry, I feel ill at ease in a car, especially when I don't know the driver. I can't help myself to calculate the odds of a crash. 
I understand, but don't worry. I had my driver's license two years ago. She looks mortified. Only two years? Yes, but I'm prepared for anything. My last sentence intrigues her. She lifts an eyebrow and shows a mischievous grin. We'll see. As I drive past the next town, I notice that it obviously didn't go as well as I thought. Sam currently seems more interested in landscape. I'm disappointed. I was expecting a pleasant company, a funny one for once, but she doesn't look like talking. Try a pun as what her favorite movie. And I'm gonna go for the fun. Why do bananas need sunscreen? Sam seems intrigued, so I continue. Because they peel. It's complicated to hide genuine disgust, and Sam is quite skilled to do so. But her surprise is hard to dissimulate. She tries a brief grin and finally says, You're a funny one. My mediocre attempt hasn't worked. Sam resumes her action and serves second some of her friends, I guess. I mumble to myself. I shouldn't be allowed to talk sometimes. My relationship with other people has always been weird. I must be from a different world. I am quite certain of it. The ride is peaceable. Peaceable? Sam and I have finally agreed to one radio station which is playing music from the 80s. Quite spontaneously, we sing together, I want to break free from Queen. She even does weird noises and laughs at herself. But then, she screams, a cat is crossing the road, it's only a matter of time before we crash. Uh, okay, which one do I go for? Just handle the situation. Ah! I violently press the brake pedal. The wheels screech against the ground. However, I made a ah, oh, dang it! I made a huge mistake. I haven't looked in the mirror, nor I have seen the truck just behind me. Hopefully, the truck manages to stop a few inches in front of my bumper. Sam and I exchange a sigh of relief, but her look gives me chills. Terror, horror, and wrath can be observed on her face. I should have never gotten in that dang car. Once the danger has been averted, I restart the vehicle and stay focused on the road. My pulse is racing, but after a deep breath, I am able to regain my composure. Three or four miles away from the hotel, Sam is getting stiffer and she doesn't look well. I try to slow down a bit and to drive slowly. She told me that she was ill at ease in the car. I don't want her to throw up or be deathly pale. But then her voice rings in my ears. Can you stop the car for a moment? I need some air. But you just have to wait a few minutes and we'll, we'll be arrived. I really don't feel that well. Please, Roseanne. I know, period. Okay, don't worry. Just give me a sec. I reluctantly shrug and accept her will. I stop on the roadside next to a forest path. Ah, gosh, that sound is so scary. Sam gets out of the, out of the car to relax. She's gonna get lost. I join her and begins my contemplation of the landscapes. The wood scent is quite striking. I'm calm, Franny is now nearer than it was at the start of this trip. I will be able to fix her to help with her needs and she will fulfill mine. I'm excited, so excited. It's been ages since my last checkup on Granny and I certainly have been wrong not to do it before. But, oh, what was that? I'm completely lost in my thoughts, uh, so I don't react when a piping sound echoes in my back. I would not even have moved it if I hadn't feel something forcefully hit the back of my head. Ah, oh, come on. My whole body falls to the ground because of the power of the strike. The knock was extremely violent. I can barely hear a thing. It's tingling in my ears. A dark veil falls over my eyes. I hardly see a thing. 
I managed to raise my body so I could hopefully distinguish what had hit me. Why is there a second player there? Surprisingly, Sam is the only person there. Surprisingly, Sam is the only person there. She appears to have a metallic bar in her hand, which is coming out of nowhere, and she must be staring at me express and let I throw myself into it and why? This situation makes no sense. I don't understand. Why would she do that? This is insane. I hear her footsteps. The young woman bends down, but it's hard to clearly see her. I can only notice one thing. Her eyes has changed. There is no compassion, no pity. There are empty, like an infinite void now. There is no compassion, no pity, comma, period. Why? There, there are empty, an infinite void now. Her piercing glare is diabolical behind her spectacles. You're just a bad driver. How? She punches me in the face. I'm breathless. I'm scared. I would n have never imagined to be a victim one day. I swallow my saliva, filled my blood. My sister died one year ago in a car crash. She was just an innocent passenger. But the driver wasn't qualified. His moves were too slow. He wasn't paying attention. That's why I'm the one verifying if people are qualified or not. I'm sorry to tell you this, Roseanne, but you have to disappear. I can allow someone as dangerous as you on the road. You're not trustworthy. No one should die because of your pitiful skill. And I won't take the risk of letting you go alive. She flashes a satisfying grin. So now? But triumphant... I struggle to escape, but unfortunately my head is spinning and any move seems out of option. Sam has the perfect occasion and she does not miss it. A sharp, ah, gosh, a sharp pain takes me at the back of my neck. I'm not allowed to think anymore. A dark shadow seizes me forever. Okay, so. What even happened? Gosh, the sound effects are just loud. They come out of nowhere. Let's see who's about to share my journey. Okay, let's have death come along. Desperate house mouth and smoke and I won't kill you. Oh, yeah, right. Oh, gosh. An eerie shadow comes next to, to my car and settles in. My eyes are burned by the bright colors of his necklace. A Hawaiian one, a lay. Then he splashes a smile at me. Am I dreaming or is it a really bad Halloween costume? I can't tell. I can't even make up my mind. Is he stylish or is he a completely weirdo? Ask what party is coming from. Instinctively, do I? I'm gonna ask the party. Are you dressed for a party? The figure moves closer to me. He stares at me for a never ending couple of seconds and suddenly says, Are you? Well, that's harsh. No, I'm not. I'm just wondering. Well, never mind. Your look is special. How so? I don't see very often people dressed up as the Reaper with a with an Hawaiian with an Hawaiian necklace. Oh, it's supposed to be with a Hawaiian necklace, but you spelled necklace wrong. You spelled it necklace. But I'm the Reaper. I'm just taking some vacation. And I'm Santa Claus, but I admit you're extremely convincing. The dark clothes, the hood, the, that skeletal face. I'm impressed. Are you an actor? The passenger has a grin on his face. Is it that obvious? You got me there. I'm just up. Reality isn't really what it looks like. You have a great intuition, after all. 
What are the odds of having a real Reaper in your car? None, I guess. I hope. Aha. Reaper. That's how we'll call this gentleman. Is chilling out on the back bench. He doesn't have his seatbelt fastened, as if he doesn't mind the least. Time calmly passes until I've got an idea to strike up a conversation. Initially, a debate. I go with the second one. So, let's talk about serious stuff. Which character do you like most in Desperate? The Reaper's eyes sparkle. He starts jumping out of seat like an excited kid before Christmas. One of the best things of this century, and that's a difficult question, I don't know who to pick. They're all really interesting, and I could spend days and nights watching it. I love the lead roles. Come on, I really can say, have you watched the show? I used to, with my mom, but it was a long time ago. I understand. I watched the show with my dog. It was a hellhound, though. Anyways, it was a real sweetheart. It loved when I tickled his big and tall. Pause. I don't respond to the Reaper as the car on the opposite road disturbs my driving. A few minutes after that, my passenger bluntly says, You should be ready for anything for your dreams. Just to say, hell isn't a nice place to be. The best vacations in the whole universe are certainly on Earth. Take the devil for instance. He chose to relax here. I'd also choose to relax here if I had the time, but duty calls every dang day. My body gets stiff. For a short moment, I've had the feeling that this man knew something about me. For a sec, I thought he knew what I'd done. I take a deep breath. I'll wisely think about it, haha. <laughs> Hell isn't my career plan. I hope so for you, girl. And then the disguised man starts giggling. We're almost at the end of the drive. When the reaper gets closer to me, I can smell the nice odor of the flowers around his neck. He's smiling at me. What's your name? Sorry, I completely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Roseanne. Thanks, but it's my bad. I wasn't completely honest with you from the start. I'm no Reaper. I'm death itself. Reaper? This, this is a joke? I do not believe it. Should I be surprised? Well, he looks like death. Death on vacation to be true. Some part of me should be freaking out, but the universe is crazy. Why wouldn't I believe that death is in front of me? Nice meeting you, then. I just hope you won't put me on your blacklist. Deathless, you mean? I chuckle. Yes, that, but I have a couple of things to do before I die. Please wait. Death happily nods. I reach the drop-off point. Death gives me a high five to say goodbye, and gets out of the car with his luggage. There is no doubt, I may have had an encounter with Death, and that Death is going on vacation as, as soon as he crosses the street. He disappears in the dark shadow and magically vanishes. Well, no, I'll just have to pick the new hitchhiker. Please. I don't want to meet someone weirder. Okay, nope. I should probably go with the stop. I'd rather be patient than being with someone who's not worth it or who's creeping me out. I take off at full speed to feel the wind on my skin. Is it pleasant to be by yourself? There is no one to bother you, and no one to ask you now. 
things, no one to annoy you. Is it just me? In a way, it reminds me of the sensation like at Granny's. That's feeling of power, enlightenment, and peacefulness, that little paradise in hell. I stopped the car at the hotel's car park where I'm supposed to meet a new hitchhiker. I'm quite excited. Half of the trip has been done. There is only a hundred miles left. But a look at my wallet makes me shudder. Don't forget about the money for Zan who need it. So I want to sap and take a breath. Should I accept him as passport? And cheesy. Death metal. Okay. Holding this one. An old woman with a blue pullover sits in the back seat. She has the sweetest smile ever. She only has one bag and seems extremely joyful. She even reminds me of Granny. Her rosy cheeks are similar and they both have the same carrying look. I suddenly notice that the name written on her shirt, Iron Maiden, I chuckle. That ride will certainly be memorable. Introduce myself or ask if it is her first ride. Hello, I'm Roseanne. To whom do I have the pleasure? The granny turns towards me. She winks to the rear view mirror and exclaims, I'm Loriana, but everybody calls me Gigi. A pleasure. May I say that I love Iron Maiden? Then you must have great taste. And you're definitely someone of quality. We shared a smile as the old lady relaxes in the back of the car. She is obviously tired and out of breath. She must have ran to get here on time and I find it quite nice of her. I've always had a thing for old people. They can be a real pain in the butt, but sometimes they can be real angels. Like kids when I think of it. I confidently hit the road and press the button to start the car radio. The time has come when the car radio suddenly starts to play Kansas Carry on my wayward son. I'm tempted to follow my guts and listen to it really loudly. However, I should think of the, old, the poor old lady I don't want to be responsible for, for a headache. Instead, I slightly turn my chest towards her. What? Ask her what's your favorite band. Which one of the favorite birds? I'm gonna ask her her favorite band. So, apart from Iron Maiden, what's your favorite band? The famous ones like Sum 41, Metallica, or the West Mainstream, just like Megadeth or Dope. Gigi coyly smiles and gestures to me. It seems that you're well informed. For once, you didn't mention Ramstein. Let's say that I'm open-minded, and I enjoy different types of musics. So, young girl, where are you heading? I have work to do. A project to finish at my granny's place. Unfortunately, my wallet isn't full as it used to be, and I don't mind meeting new people, so car sharing is the best option. Yeah, it's quite hard on those days. What kind of project? I hesitate for a brief instant. I'm a freelance artist. I play with various types of materials to create advent guard sculptures and painting. It's been my passion since a very young age, and I hope one day people will admire it in museums. The old woman kindly nods. I can't hear the station well. Can you turn the volume up? I respect her wish. Instantly, the lyrics of the song resonate and collide with the aggressive teeth of the wind. The music gives rhythm to our journey, our voices, and our mood. Gigi and I are finally getting along, but we both know that it's just a way to pass time. At some point, the elder looks for something in her bag and hands me a couple of appealing and mouth-watering cookies. Accept them or politely. Well, what could be in the cookies? Well, acceptable, of course. 
Thanks, that's really nice of you. I don't think twice and grab a portion of two cookies. I put it into my mouth and start chewing with what I think looks like a satisfying grin. Gigi is appreciating my enthusiasm as she is smiling with her deep brown eyes. It has a particular taste, but it's yummy. Oh, I forgot to tell you something. Here's a secret ingredient. Can you guess it? In my entire life, I had never said no to a challenge, and I was sure it wouldn't happen today, especially when I'm dealing with food. Cinnamon? Well, that's correct, young girl, although I'm talking about something else. What then? Marijuana. I immediately spit the rest of my second bite in the direction of the windshield. What? Seriously? That was unexpected. Really unexpected. Totally unexpected. And to be honest, Roseanne, just one bite is enough to feel high. Holy crap. I cough to eliminate the last piece of cookies, but it seems to be completely useless. Gigi bursts into laughter and she is holding her belly as her giggles are uncontrollable. In fact, I've already taken one or two before the ride. Unicorns, I see unicorns with blue heads, purple tails, human teeth, they're all cheerfully dancing around the car in a perfect circle. I wave repeatedly at them but they don't seem to notice me, I'm invisible. Yeah, it must be that so. I've always dreamt to be invisible. I stick my tongue out when I wonder, I space out. What would it be like to be, uh, to be an unicorn? Uh, what, what, what kind of life would I have? Would I be in the right shoes? Would I truly like who I am and the people around me? No, granny to take care of. No crappy family and no worries about unemployment for being the epic guard and un un understood. Uh, wouldn't it be rather nice, right? But then I can hear a croaky and tired voice. Whoa, look out, a giraffe! I try to turn around and, and to have a glimpse of what, what of, of who's talking, but all I'm able to see is. Uh, the writing Iron Maiden. For what appears to be an hour, I probably placed myself behind the wheel. By the time I notice the huge giraffe at the end of the road, I collide with a rough, firm, and indestructible body. The impact is sudden, vivid, unsettling. It happens in a flash of a blinding light. Oh! God! Oh! freaking sound numbness takes over a tense void replaces a landscape obscurity invades every aspect of my life for good the strange old voice explained told you i don't know why but all the drivers with whom i hit the road die in a car crash it might be because of the cookies thanks god i'm used to that i was a stunt woman might be why, ah ha ha, gosh, we should have hit the poor giraffe, poor, poor thing, and we should be respected, hope you're weeping. Though my eyes can barely see a thing, I finally understand that the giraffe is no animal but a trunk? You mean a truck? The collision has bent the tree in a sonic boom? What? A hot and unidentified liquid starts to run down my temples. It doesn't take me a while to analyze its blood. Shoot. I vainly attempt to move my arms. My brain and my body have been disconnected for good. So, fate reveals itself to me, darkness awaits me, has always waited for my arrival. 
There is no heading back. My whole body is broken, and for some reason, the old lady who has been traveling alongside me is safe and sound. If I had chosen a way to die, I would have to do everything in my power to avoid dying because of a fake giraffe, which was in fact a trunk, due to the fact the the fact that a sweet lady had given me marijuana cookies. What are you talking about? The trunk? No one will know, although I should seriously enter in the Darwin Award. Okay, that that that's that's everything for now. I, I I'm gonna head on out. This thing is just completely crazy. Goodbye.